today. We will be recording today's webinar and uh, sharing it on our website and on through social media as well for viewers to check out later. If you don't mind, if you go to the chat, tell us your name, uh, what organization, if you're with an organization and where you're from. And if you know where you're from indigenous country, even extra points. And again, we'll get started shortly. We're just giving uh, everyone some time to sign in with their Zoom link. Our panelists are excited to share with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Please, if you don't mind, uh, share where you're from in the chat room, your name, your organization, and if you know where you are in, in Indigenous country. Uh, welcome Molly, also in Treaty 6 territory. Then we have Car Carlotta here, our panelists. James, welcome James from Treaty 7 down in Calgary, right on. We have a uh, great representation in Treaty 7 today. I wonder if we have anyone in Treaty 8 today. Welcome, Denisha, also from Treaty 7, living in Calgary. Today we're going to be talking about uh, mentors and that everyone can be a mentor and the benefits of being a mentor and a mentee. Looks like we uh, almost have everyone here. Uh, let's get started. We have less than an hour with these wonderful, wonderful ladies uh, this afternoon. But before we do, my name is Tanya Taranjo. I'm with Alberta Mentor Mentoring Partnership, otherwise known as AMP. If you're not a partner or this is the first time you're joining us for uh, one of our webinars, please go to our website, sign up for our newsletter. We have a lot of webinars going on all through the year. We have a lot of great resources that may be able to assist you. Uh, I'm the uh, Indigenous Engagement Lead and I promote Indigenous mentoring across Alberta, but here really uh, today to be a host to these wonderful uh, ladies who signed up. Before we start, we're gonna um, share our land acknowledgement with you. Our land acknowledgement is something that uh, means a lot to us at AMP. And as an Indigenous person, I'll just take a minute to explain why we do land acknowledgements. Uh, they are, uh, it's an unofficial, uh, truth to, and reconciliation call to action that organizations, uh, communities, really many have adopted as a, a standard practice before a meeting, before an event, to basically acknowledge tr the traditional stewards of our land. Because everywhere in Canada, everywhere you've been in Canada was once 100% owned by Indigenous people. So here in Alberta, uh, AMP acknowledges that we are on and we support mentoring for youth in the traditional territories across Alberta of the many First Nations from Treaty 6, Treaty 7, and Treaty 8, and the Métis of the eight Alberta Métis settlements, and the Inuit. There's actually over 3,000 Inuit in, uh, in Alberta whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. And I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to take that time. Uh, we're going to get into introducing our panel here today. We have uh, three amazing guests. Our first uh, guest I'm going to introduce is a mentee. Her name is Yeshel. She's 18 years old and comes from Columbia. She is finishing her last year at Father Lacombe High School. And after graduation, she is planning to attend the University of Calgary. Uh, Yeshel's areas of interest are law, politics, and she plans to pursue a major in political science, the sciences. Uh, just by getting to share a little bit of time with Yeshel, she, she is a super friendly person and loves to interact with other people, learn about their cultures and traditions, and as well experience new things. Uh, really excited to hear more about uh, Yeshel's mentee experiences in a couple of minutes. Our second uh, special guest panelist today is a mentor, uh, Gianna. Gianna is currently finishing her last year of studies at University of Calgary, 
where she, she she's pursuing a dual degree in political science combined with an honors in law and society. Fantastic, Gianna. She graduates in April of 2022, just a few short months away and plans to pursue a first level common law degree, commonly known as a Juris Doctor degree. Her aspiration to study law is firmly rooted in her interest in world events and evaluating the microism of human relations. We're super excited that uh, Gianna is able to join us today and excited to learn more about your background, Gianna, and your experiences of being a mentor. And our third and last, uh, but not least, panelist who's joining us today is Carlotta. Carlotta is a professional ice skater. She started skating at 10 years old and hasn't stopped since. Throughout her years of training, she has mentored, she was mentored by her figure skating coach and also by the many wise older peers that she had surrounding her. She joined Disney on ice when she was 17 years old, performing for Feld Entertainment for nearly eight years. She then joined Royal Caribbean Willy B-Tech Productions and sailed across the world performing for seven different ships. Wow, that's a fantastic uh, resume there, Carlotta. As you see, we have um, some really awesome, awesome young ladies joining us today. And I just want to um, thank you from AMP uh, for joining us, for taking the time to share with us, ladies. And, and as well, everyone in our audience who continues to share, you know, where they're, where they're joining us from. We got Heather in Red Deer. We got Astrid in... Treaty Six and Sylvan Lake. We got Stephanie also in Treaty Six. So thank you everyone for joining us and sharing in this rich conversation today. Uh, we're going to try to monitor the chat as much as possible. You know, although we have time at the end of the webinar to answer um, questions, you know, you don't have to wait till the end. Uh, you can pop your questions in there, and I'll try to get you. Um, I'll try to get your questions as we see them. So welcome ladies, uh, you know what? We're gonna jump right into it. And Gianna, I want to start with you this afternoon. Gianna, what inspired you to start mentoring at Calgary's Immigrant Women's Association? Hello everyone. Hi Tanya, thank you for the introduction. Uh, and I would like to take a moment to thank everyone for joining us today. Um, now to address Tanya's question, what inspired me to start mem mentoring at Calgary's Immigration Women's Association? Um, I could truly think of many reasons, but the most important of them all for me is that I am also a proud daughter of immigrant parents and therefore an immigrant myself. Uh, so when I decided to take the initiative to get more involved with my community and help address the needs and concerns of immigrant and refugee women, uh, as well as empower these women, uh, it was mainly because of my own personal experiences and challenges that I had faced uh, as a young immigrant when I landed to Canada seven years ago. Um, I think when it comes to immigrants and refugees, it is important to acknowledge that uh, while the root causes of migration might be different for everyone, uh, we all face similar cha challenges and barriers when we try to adapt to a new culture, assimilate into the workplace here, as well as uh, eventually build our lives here in Canada. Uh, and one of these uh, barriers in particular is the lack of uh, resources, whether those are access to public resources or social programs. Um, sometimes it is the case that these resources do exist, they are there, uh, but as newcomers, unfortunately, we are not always aware of them, uh, and oftentimes it becomes an issue of not knowing where to go. Um, so considering and knowing this, I wanted to get more involved uh, to contribute in helping uh, immigrant women, and especially young women who are just getting started and are embarking in a new professional path um, to become more familiar with the resources that are available to them uh, within their provinces or territories. Um, and an organization like the Calgary's Immigration Women's Association does exactly that. They offer programs that are designed to help immigrant women access services and resources in their community uh, as they integrate into Canadian society. Uh, in fact, I will talk a little 
bit later in more detail about these programs, just in case we have potential mentors or mentees that want to know more, want to get involved in the future, why not? Um, but to get back to my source of inspiration, I think, uh, apart from my uh, own personal experience that pushed me to do my, my part uh, and help these women, uh, it's also the fact that I truly believe that immigrant youth and youth uh, all over Canada are seeds to a fruitful future. So um, they can always benefit from a friendly face and a helping hand on any given day. Um, but I didn't want to be simply a guide to these women. I also wanted to contribute in one way or another in alleviating some of the issues, concerns, or stresses um, that they face. Um, I acknowledge that there are a million refugees and immigrants all over the world that uh, have not been given the opportunity that I have been given or the opportunities that all of us have been given, all of us here today have been given. Uh, so I truly believe that we should all be using these opportunities to uplift another human being. At the end of the day, um, I believe the power of philanthropy could be truly life-changing and influential for both uh, mentors and mentees. Uh, and at least for person from personal experience, I can confidently say that for me, it has been life-changing. Uh, and especially when it concerns the younger generations and as mentors, we have the power to change and influence uh, their lives for the better. Uh, and if you have the opportunity to do it, you should do it. Um, I, I truly think that when you are helping one young person, uh, you are helping an entire generation, not just one individual. Wow, Gianna, that was fantastic answer about your inspiration. Like, as bravo to you for, you know, stepping up uh, for new immigrant women to Canada, to Alberta, to Calgary. Because, yeah, I, I see the same, that our youth are the seeds for a fruitful future. And if that, someone doesn't step up, um, who's going to be there for them? You know, that's our responsibility. And it can be life-changing for the mentee and the mentor to have this rich mentoring relationship. So thank you so much for giving us such a thoughtful answer, Gianna. Thank you for the space. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, turning now to uh, Yeshel. Uh, Yeshel, what does your mentoring relationship with Gianna look like and what kinds of activities do you do together? Okay. My relationship with Gianna has been two ways, the professional one, but also the friendly one. She has been my mentor from September of last year. She helped me to build my interest as well to explore my uh, future career and improve my education every day. We have a pretty good um, connection where she understands my principles, values, and weakness, and who I am like a person uh, outside of or professional ties. We spend our time focusing on my career and academic goals. She helped me a lot of to understand how is the process around university. Uh, for example, how can I apply for a scholarships? How can I get a student loans? What classes I should be take in the future? All the things around uh, university. Apart from that, uh, Diana and me, we love, we both appreciate um, art like a uh, more inspiration uh, that have many extensions. For example, painting, writing poetry. We enjoy the time when we are uh, sharing things about our cultures, for example, music and uh, food, place that one day we want to visit together or whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, and then we share some challenges that we have actually like women's in a Canadian society. Oh, yeah, Shell, thank, thank you for, um, you know, your bravery and your openness with being vulnerable with us today and sharing about your mentoring relationship with Gianna. We really appreciate that. And also with your well-spokenness, your communication skills are incredible. I know how much time that both of you, you know, put in today to share about this and it's really coming across so eloquently. And I just wanted both of you to know that. Thank you so much. 
Absolutely. Thank you so much. You know, and continuing on with the, the theme here that mentors are everywhere and, and there's great benefits. I want to turn now to Carlotta. Uh, Carlotta, you've benefited from mentors helping guide you in your life and your career as, as a figure skater. Please uh, share with us about how you became a mentor during COVID. Okay, uh, hello everyone. And I just want to applaud the two ladies that have shared their stories. I mean, I'm so uplifted by both of you and I hope that we can be friends and you can also be my mentor to guide me through life. <laughs> Honestly, both of you are just wonderful human beings and I'm certainly touched by both of your stories. So you've already changed my world by, by sharing um, your beautiful story. So thank you. Um, well, for me during COVID, oh boy, <laughs> I think we all needed a mentor during that time period. Um, for my own personal story, I actually was living in London, England for two years and I was doing a really wonderful um, figure skating show over there. And so around March 11th, I decided to take um, take some time to come back to Canada. All of us you know, weren't sure what was going on with COVID or what the repercussions were going to be for everybody across the world. So I made my way to Calgary to um, visit my sister who lives uh, in, North, in Northern Calgary. And at the time, um, it was really hard for me because I had spent majority of my life skating all day, every day. And when the lockdown happened, I didn't know what to do. I I had only knew skating. I only knew waking up in the morning, putting my skates on, getting on the ice, being in my safe place. And when I was in Calgary, this is a completely new city to me. I'm not from here. I'm from Prince Rupert, BC. Um, I didn't feel safe. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have any friends. I, you know, we couldn't see anyone. I mean, we we're doing Zoom chats like this all the time. But what I did as an escape was I ran every single day. I would just run. I would breathe. I needed, I needed that mental, um, mental escape. And uh, one day, the the stress of the unknown really surfaced my emotions, and I, I started crying. I just let everything out and I was vulnerable enough to just cry in the middle of the creek, <laughs> in the middle of the trail. And I called everybody I knew, nobody answered the phone. And in that moment, I had never felt so alone in my entire life. And it really, it really struck a chord with me because I've never felt like that before. Went home, rested and you know, gave myself a new mindset, like, okay, we're going to start a new day tomorrow. So sun was shining, went on my run, and there was a girl in front of me. And there was a sense of her energy that was longing for love. And you could tell that she was very lonely and that she was hurt inside. And something inside of me said, stop ask that girl if she's okay. Because the day before people were walking beside me, but of course everybody was scared of COVID. Nobody wanted to talk to anybody. So nobody asked me if I was okay. And again, that you know made me feel incredibly lonely. So this girl was in front of me and I thought, you know what? I'm gonna stop and ask if she's okay. And so I pulled up my AirPods and I said to her, I was like, hi, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I just wanted to ask, are you okay? And she's like, no, well, yes, no. <laughs> she was a bit unsure because, you know, who's a stranger talking to her? Anyways, um, and I said to her, I was like, look, I just want you to know whatever you're going through right now, it will pass. Right now in this world, everything is really scary. Everything is really unknown. We're all feeling alone, but whatever you're going through, it's meant to happen and it will pass and everything will feel better one way or another. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. Anyways, and I then asked her, I was like, look, do you wanna go for a social distancing walk? We can be six feet apart. And she was like, yeah, okay. And so I said to her, I was like, so is it about a boy? <laughs> and she goes, yeah. And I said, okay, how old are you? She goes, um, I'm 15. <laughs> And I said, okay, well, I am in my 30s. <laughs> and 
And I just want to let you know that whatever this boy has done to you to break your heart and make you feel this way, that he is one of many boys that are going to pick apart your heart. And one day there's going to be that one guy and he's going to put all those pieces together and you're going to experience a love that is the most beautiful, heartwarming love you'll ever feel in your whole life. And she just started crying and then I started crying. And, and after that, we, we went on a two hour walk. I walked her home, I met her mom and dad and then we planned to meet um, twice a week throughout my time living, living in Northern Calgary. And we would share books, we would share poetry, we'd share films, anything that uplifted us. At the end of the end of our time together, we would write our goals for the week. And then we'd share the, the small successes that we had with each other. And, you know, it turned into the most beautiful relationship. We're still friends to this day. And I, I needed that more than anything. And she was my angel and I was hers. And after that, I, I wanted to work with um, Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Calgary. And I was granted a job with uh, CBC's Battle of the Blades. And I represented that charity because of our beautiful story. So sorry, that was so long. <laughs> that was our story. And that's why I'm here today. So thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Carlotta, for sharing that beautiful story and mm -hmm. also being vulnerable. You you gave me goosebumps, you know, that um, especially during COVID and all times, it's so important to have compassion and be empathetic to our neighbors, you know, yeah. our, our, our sisters and our brothers, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> our young people who, um, you know, we, we all have difficulties going through life and challenges and relationships are, are one of those things that everyone struggles with. And I can imagine how important it was um, for that young person just, just to have that outlet, you know, that you provided at that time, Carlotta. And mm -hmm. so um, thank you so much. That was amazing of you and two hours and then to develop an entire relationship, a mentoring relationship. That's really fantastic. And again speaks to our theme today that mentors can be everywhere you know that you can be inspired by moments like that and uh from that I mean you can change someone's life you whether it's your own life or yeah. the mentee's life right yeah. she so, certainly changed mine <laughs> that's so fantastic thank you thank you Carlotta thank you. um Going back to uh, Deanna, you know, and, and talking about uh, Calgary Immigrant Women's Association again. Deanna, please like share why you think uh, CEWA, that's the acronym, is important to newcomers. And what advice would you give to somebody mentoring uh, youth from another culture? I, I love this question. Please, Deanna, share. Absolutely. Uh, well, before I jump into that, uh, Carlota, I wanted to tell you, thank you for sharing your story. I think it takes courage to share vulnerable experiences and uh, your story in particular speaks to, um, you know, this mentor-mentee relationship that it doesn't always have to be uh, professional, you know, uh, sometimes you can talk about boys <laughs> too, you know, uh, but thank you for sharing that. Uh, now, going back to uh, the question that Tanya asked, uh, as I, I briefly mentioned before, uh, newcomers to Canada face a number of similar barriers and at times systemic issues as well, and that is limited resources, the uh, lack of integration of programs and policies that sometimes impede uh, the transition into a Canadian society. Um, but it's oftentimes, as I said, that newcomers are not familiar or aware of the resources that uh, are available to help them settle in our country. Um, in Canada, we have approximately 250,000 immigrants that come in every year. Uh, and when you think about it, that is a very large number of immigrants, a very large number of newcomers 
that at some point throughout their transition journey, uh, they will need to rely on at least uh, one kind of welfare benefit or welfare program uh, to overcome settlement difficulties, whether that involves uh, structural and instrumental support, whether that involves um, emotional support, uh, whether that involves social support or whatever the case may be. Um, and it is organizations like the Calgary's Immigration Women's Association, uh, that's where they come in play. Uh, they are imp important to newcomers because they are designed to support uh, immigrant settlements more effectively, uh, as well as promote immigrant well-being. Uh, and to go into more detail for those who do not know, CIWA um, is a nonprofit organization. Uh, they have more than 50 programs that support immigrant and refugee women, uh, girls and their families. Um, they offer a wide range of programs to newcomers, such as services um, in language training, employment, family services, um, and in particular, I want you to talk about two programs that I am involved in, uh, and those are the youth program as well as the pathways uh, to success. They are both designed to empower immigrant youth um, to reach their full potential and get involved into their communities. Uh, but they're also helping uh, to guide this youth throughout their professional path uh, while they settle in a new country and adapt and adjust to a new, a new culture and circumstances. Um, so I, I guess to summarize, uh, I think it's not only a matter of offering newcomers and especially youth a safety net as, as they settle in Canada. Uh, it's more than that. I think it's uh, it's more than helping and guiding them to facilitate access to education, employment, or other basic needs. It's about working directly with them um, in terms of social relations. It's about supporting them and helping create a, a, a strong sense of belonging. Uh, it's about adding uh, and, and considering cultural and social dimensions that help them to interact effectively and efficiently as they transition into a new society. Um, so at the end of the day, it's a, it's a two-way street, I think. It's about, uh, it's about positive interactions. Um, it's about helping one another to uh, fit, effectively build networks of mutually supportive relationships, uh, which actually takes us to the next question that Tanya asked. Uh, what advice would I give somebody mentoring a youth from another culture? So as a mentor, um, I can say that a mentor-mentee relationship uh, is about keeping, is mainly about keeping in mind the emerging needs of immigrant youth. Uh, while the relationship for the most part, it could be very professional. Uh, in this case, any level of professionalism will require us that as mentors, uh, we have to be culturally sensitive. And when I talk about cultural sensitivity, what I mean is that when we take to in the initiative to actually provide support and guidance to these youth, uh, we need to be aware, we need to educate ourselves, we need to be accepting of other cultures, ideologies and identities that are not our own. Um, what I've realized throughout my own personal experiences is that mentoring is not a one size fits all. There is no formula that you can just pick up and apply in any given situation when you're working with a mentee. Uh, so mentoring is about adapting. Um, it is about being flexible. Uh, we need to be mindful of the fact uh, that we're not simply dealing with youth that come um, from other countries and are experiencing transitioning challenges, uh, but they come from different culture, racial, religious, and ethnic backgrounds. And sometimes it is the case that unfortunately, there are youth that uh, have experienced gender-based violence. They have uh, experienced inequality. They have experienced abuse. They are going through rel relationship problems. They're going through trauma experiences. Uh, so I believe that there is an intersectionality of elements, of factors, of issues, of circumstances that as mentors, we need to be mindful of. Um, and at the end of the day, the relationship, it's uh, truly about both parties because it's, it's life-changing and it's beneficial to both. Sometimes working with the youth um, and other newcomers that come from diverse backgrounds, 
uh, can help us as mentors understand any unconscious biases that uh, we might have been carrying with us. Um, but at the end of the day, um, as mentors, we are here to invest in mentees' personal growth and professional development. Uh, and if we lack the ability to be flexible and keep an open mind, if we la lack the ability to see things from our mentees' perspectives, uh, I don't think we'll be able to change or influence anything or anyone for that matter. Um, so I, I think it's important to emphasize that um, here is that confidentiality is also important. Uh, if you have, you have to be trustworthy. You have to have uh, the trust of potential mentees. Uh, if you connect, you cannot make your mentee uh, feel comfortable uh, to see if you cannot demonstrate that you are considerable, open-minded and reliable, uh, the relationship I believe is simply not going to be fruitful. Uh, so in short, if I uh, was to give an advice, advice to somebody um, who's mentoring a youth from another culture or country, I would say, say dedica dedicate the time to do your research, uh, get a sense of your mentee's past experience, communicate openly and honestly, uh, be accepting and keep an open mind, and finally be respectful. Uh, I think respect, uh, you know, is truly uh, one of the most important factors in determining the success of a good professional relationship or any relationship. So, and while I'm here, actually, I would uh, like to uh, give potential mentees or other mentees out there um, an advice, and that would be to not hesitate to reach out, be curious, ask questions, uh, use all the resources that are available to you, regardless of who you are, who you come from, uh, where you are born, uh, who your parents are or were, uh, every opportunity can be yours if you seek it. <clears throat> Gianna, you could have had your own webinar on the, that question alone. Damn, you are putting your dual degree in political science and honors in law and society to work and it's paid off. Like eloquent, eloquent answer, you know, you're full of information, encouragement and hope. I could listen to you all day, Tiana. Thank you, Tanya. Well, is, at the end of the game, at the day, that is the, the goal to to put these degrees to use, I guess. So, <laughs> yes, and you know, and as I read deeper into um, your bio here, like just listening to you, it, you you are walking the talk, and I want to commend you on that. You know, because. For me, as a as an indigenous woman, like even just with answering you that question, I think it's so important that mentors don't necessarily need to come from the same background because they need to learn. Like for a newcomer, it would be beneficial for a Canadian, even an indigenous Canadian, to be a mentor to them rather than a newcomer mentoring a newcomer. It's it's nice, but to give that other perspective is so important as well to to provide the insights that you know newcomers wouldn't have they don't know about the resources they don't know about the nuances of culture or or you know about the city and so i i think it's really important you know that the points that you touched on you know do your research about their background you know don't assume things right the don't don't take from stereotypes that might be out there and have that open mind and acceptedness and build that trust with the mentee so that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what your background is. It's about that mentoring relationship. Absolutely. Uh, I think at the end of the day in, in a society like this, it's a, it's not only a melting pot of uh, cultures and backgrounds and identities and religions and uh, ethnicities. It's a melting pot of uh, ideas of uh, everything, experiences, circumstances, uh, and we need to learn to be accepting uh, of those. So yeah, I think that that is very important, keeping an open mind as a mentee, but as a mentor, uh, just as an individual walking the streets every day and interacting with people, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yes, We're, we are truly stronger together, you know? 
we 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 are Canadians here and we could have we could have a better Canada with just collaborating, being friends, talking on the street like Carlotta did to a stranger who maybe needed help, right? Having the professional guidance that you're giving Yeshell. You know, small things like that can make huge differences in people's lives. Uh, Yeshell, I want to go back to you. I mean, I want Gianna to be my mentor now, you know, she's so amazing. <laughs> But yeah. Yeshelle, yeah. yeah, what are you what do you look for in a mentor? And uh, you know, now that you have this amazing mentor to go back from, what what kind of expectations do you have, you know, from a mentoring relationship? Okay, so as a mentee, I was looking for a person with the ability to teach me every day something new. For example, a person with the answer for my million of questions every day. A person that can support me and guide me through, through life, you know? So like a new person in Canada, I have many challenges and trouble moments every day in my life. But you, when it's on time to keep the control, because it's hard, you know, it's life. It's every day, every day can be a new challenge for you. But when you have people like Gianna, my mentor, everything is going to be really, really, really easy because she always had the right answer for my question and she always is going to be uh, there to help me when I need it. Uh, another expectation to find a mentor for me was meet with a person that can inspire me to find the best version of myself and with that way be able to believe in, my, in me, believe in my dreams so when I look, Gianna, I don't know, I don't only see my mentor, I see like an image of my future self. And uh, someone how is like a mirror for me, someone that can teach me something is like a, a part of life for me. Simply a point of view to work hard every day to try to do something new, to change something, to make a difference in my life simply the person that I want to be one day uh, so for that it's important my relationship with Jana. so that like I say before we love we both love poetry right yeah. so last night I take the time to make something for her so <gasps> I wanna <laughs> it's a surprise <laughs> oh yes please so I'm gonna share a poem that I made last night for Jana. So my point is going to be like, Gianna, a lovely person who is my mentor with love and passion is always working to get a moment of inspiration or teach me something to put in practice. Feeling the magic of half a mentor, talking for hours with many questions, getting trouble in some situations, but she has the answer for my million questions. I got a good solution for a new version like the radio, like the perfect radio in a math equation. That is Yana. Sorry, Thank you so I have, much. I have to jump in here. Thank you, Yana. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really, really appreciate that. Uh, you made my day. I think it's very beautiful to to actually experience the joy of uh, you know being a mentor, giving back, and then you you know somebody appreciates that work. But uh, as your mentor, I can say that I am very proud of you. Uh, I am very proud of the progress that you have made so far. Uh, I am happy that I was there, to, and I am here to witness it. Uh, and I truly cannot wait to see where your incredible potential and. Uh, you know, hard work will take you. So thank you for that. It was truly beautiful. Thank you so much, Was. We truly love for you because you always are helping me and guiding me everything. Thank you so much. <clears throat> well, ladies, th thank you for allowing us to just witness that, right? Right? Oh, heart feels in the heart. Oh, tears coming. Denisha says, I have tears, happy tears. Uh, Vanda shares, what a panel, such wonderful girls. We're so proud of you, Gianna and Yeshel. You know, absolutely. For allowing us to be a part of your, your mentoring discussion today and, and really, you know, being vulnerable with that. And we could just see the, the support 
and and the love that you have for each other it, it's just so there's it, nothing more than beautiful and inspiring of what a mentoring relationship can be you know and that guidance um and that that motivation that yeshel is like i'm gonna write a poem now and that is fantastic and it was if if we can yeshel now you know you know we'd love to share it with our Alberta Mentoring Partnership audience, you know, put it on social media, give you credit and uh, really celebrate what the beauty of your mentoring relationship together. So if you don't mind, please email it to us and we'll put it out there. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Um, Carlotta, I know that's hard to follow, right? <laughs> like these, these stories are so powerful. <laughs> <laughs> but Carlotta, you know, um, you, you've achieved a lot in your life professionally, and you've had a lot of great uh, mentors and coaches. And, you know, you know, please take some time to share with us, you know, how that was meaningful in your life and how it impacted you and, and the results of, you know, great mentors professionally. I love the this panel. <laughs> this is just great. Everyone is so, oh, my heart is so full. I, I just want to hang out and go for coffee with you girls, go for some walks, get to know you more and learn more and be inspired more and, and take your take your energy to heart and really do the work as um, as Gianna has, has done. It's very inspirational for me. So my entire life, oh, has been filled with all the mentors. Um, I actually moved in with my figure skating coach when I was 13 years old. So not only was she my coach, she was my mentor throughout life. And I honestly, I text her every day and I said, okay, what should I do with this? What should I do with this? So she has been a mentor on and off the ice. Um, so I'm very grateful for her. Um, I also surround myself with many other mentors that are um, within my skating world. Um, there's a lot of different avenues that I have taken now that I am not doing figure skating shows on cruise ships or, or anywhere else. Now I'm, um, have moved myself more into a new role, role as a performance coach and choreographer for many um, skaters across um, Edmonton and Calgary. So this work that I do with the skaters um, is quite amazing, actually, because not only have I noticed um, a change in their performance, I've noticed a change in the confidence within themselves. So what I do with the skaters is I watch their programs and I help them access the vulnerability to shine. I help them access the vulnerability to gain confidence within themselves while they perform their solos because figure skating is a very difficult sport when it when it comes to um i mean it's judged and a lot of a lot of young women really feel that pressure and that pressure can detriment their mental health and so i'm trying to get these skaters um to really uh love skating again love skating for them not love skating to win love skating to enjoy it and to take that confidence on and off the ice so the mentors that i've had within my life have helped transition me out of the fancy shiny skating world to bring the light that i learned how to shine within myself out to the audiences and bring that to the the new and future generation of athletes and performers and young, young, young men and women within our on within our sport on and off the ice. So I'm I'm really lucky that I have surrounded myself with really wonderful people, um, you know, within the skating world, out of the skating world. And I think with Big Brothers, Big Sisters, they're doing incredible work that inspires me every day to speak to youth, talk about their dreams, talk about their goals and just help them gain the confidence to shine. <laughs> that's exactly right yeah. just helping them with their goals and helping them shine you yeah. know and sometimes it's just allowing them to see themselves shine mm -hmm. right so so often like they haven't had the compliments or the feedback or that positive input just to reinforce you know you're doing good 
Yeah. yeah. And within our sport, there's, there's such a huge technical side to it. And that's with life too. You know, there's this way of society. It's like, you have to do this. You have to do this. You have to do this. You know, you have to go to school and you have to do all these things. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be like that. You know, I, I toured professionally for 15 years and now I, I kind of get in the hump where I'm like, oh, I'm so behind. I'm, I haven't gone to school yet, but being with these skaters every day, not only am I mentoring them, they're mentoring me to just relax and remind myself that I'm, I'm doing really good work for these, these kids, whether or not they take their skating um, professionally, it's, it's about helping them off the ice as well. So I, I love what I do. I couldn't think of anything better than it. So I want to do it forever. <laughs> so, no, that's fantastic. It sounds like that uh, you are uh, perfectly paired at your position and sharing your strengths, Carlotta. Thank you know, you. I think that a lot, of, a lot of us get hung up with, um, uh, you know, going down that path where we think that you should. You know, you should graduate at this age uh, from high school. You should spend four years getting your bachelor's. You know, you should um, have kids by a certain age or married by a certain, you know, it's so much pressure. So you should be saving for your RRSPs already. Why aren't you saving for retirement? You know what I mean? All these pressures in life that, you know, sometimes it's just great to think that, you know, you are unique. And your path is your own path and exactly. no one else can define that for you. And mm. um, in, in my culture, one of our, our beliefs is that the creator provides, you know, and, and the creator has provided for all three of you on this panel, you know, provided you with um, great support and guidance community support and and just also you know that opportunity to build confidence that that self-worthiness that you know that you can do it and also that you're building this web of support you know that can help you achieve those goals to help you you know want to do better not only for yourself but also for others which I could hear so much from everyone here today um we have um another comment we have i i forgive me if i'm saying it wrong we have nea that's so heartwarming gianna and yeshel for sharing your stories and the amazing bond you share and how your mentorship relationship has accomplished and carlotta thank you so much for sharing your story she just feels so inspired that's all of, all of us today like for a Friday afternoon webinar, this is pretty nice webinar and a pretty great way to end the week, you know, reaffirming good feelings, good relationships, you know, I know that January has been heavy on a lot of us, you know, COVID's hard, feels like it's never ending. And hearing from the three of you really, you know, makes you motivated, inspired to think, yeah, you know call up that person maybe that you haven't talked to in a little bit you know take that chance even if it's a text even if it's a messenger message or i'm not on instagram or however you do instagram dm or snapchat or whatever you do you know just to check check on someone you know say hi and see if they're okay and 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 maybe give a little bit of support you know we just had uh bill let's talk the other day you know don't always need a hashtag to reach out and Mentoring can be in so many forms, right? It doesn't have to be formal. It doesn't have to be an hour every two weeks. It doesn't have to, you know, be ongoing. Mentoring could even be just a moment of reaching out to someone and, and saying hello. Uh, I just want to give opportunity if anyone has any final questions, any comments to share. Uh, thank you so much. You know, uh, we have Al. Oh, uh, Carlotto is going to be right back. Uh, we have thank you from Al Chapman, such an amazing panel, so inspiring. Thank you from our AMP team, as a colleague that's saying, you guys did an awesome job, ladies. Uh, thank you for hosting this. Uh, and I would also like to take a moment to thank Vandna and Nia. They're both uh, watching us today. Uh, thank you for giving me the, opportunities to, the opportunity to connect with Yeshal.
Um, and again, Tanya, thank you. <laughs> thank you for hosting this. No, absolutely. Um, this is a pleasure. I mean, uh, I have to also thank Sarah and Kim, my colleagues in the background for organizing and setting, setting this up. And then also for backing out and allowing me this opportunity to host this because otherwise I wouldn't have had a chance to spend, you know, this hour with you three ladies and woo, yeah, I, I got goosebumps and I feel inspired and uh, I love the way we're ending a Friday. So thank you. And again, we'll, we'll have this recorded for everyone. Uh, and please share on your social networks. I know Andy will be putting it on social media and uh, you know, share on your social pages. I think this is a story that needs to be uh, heard far and wide uh, across Alberta and newcomers and, and skaters and coaches and young athletes across Canada. Um, Andy, you can go ahead and uh, put up our closing slides. I want to thank you, ladies. And if anybody, uh, keep in touch with AMP. If you're not an official Alberta Mentoring Partnership partner, you know, sign up for our newsletter. And we have this amazing giveaway going on. We have free registration to attend an upcoming First Nation Educators Conference. And you don't have to be First Nation to attend this conference. And you would learn some great information from knowledge keepers, from leaders, and from some funny, funny, funny Indigenous people. Let me tell you, there's some comedians in this conference too. Um, also, I'm giving a um, breakout session on Indigenous mentoring. All you have to do is go to Alberta, uh, a our AMP social media sites, like our post about this giveaway. Uh, there's the QR code, like the post and comment on it. And we'll make the draw early next week of our lucky winner who will be attending the conference as AMP's guest. And with that, I'm going to say thank you, thank you, thank you again for your time. Sign up for our newsletter, follow us on social media, check us out on LinkedIn, you know, drop us a line. Uh, and if you like something about today, you know, let us know if you want more like today or you think there's other webinars. Um, we're happy to uh, try to accommodate. And Carlotta, you want to share a quote from your favorite book? Yeah. Um, I was just going to let you say the quote, please. <laughs> okay, quickly. Um, if you haven't heard of it, you guys should get this book. It's called The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse by Charlie Mackesy. Um, if you ever just want to make a cup of tea and cuddle up on your couch, read this book. Every page is uh, very heartwarming. The book is the best. Thank you, Molly. It's the most amazing book. Um, every now and then when I'm feeling like I need some love, <laughs> I'll read this one, but this one's quite good um, to end this session. Uh, we don't know about tomorrow, said the horse. All we need to know is that we love each other. <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Carlotta. Yeah, you're welcome. All <laughs> we need to say, have a fabulous weekend, everyone. And Bye. take some time so to good. say hi to someone else and also take time for yourself this weekend. Okay. Take care. Take care. Bye.